I figured I'd do another playthrough of RailSim. RailSim was the very first train simulator or very first game that I played through on YouTube. It's also the very first video on my channel. So this is version 2.91. The original public version was 2.1 in 1995. This version is from the year 2000. And you have all these German routes to choose from because the basic version is German. And now everything is in German. Luckily, my German is so-so, so I can sort of fake my way through it. I'm going to actually drive the Köln to Dusseldorf route, which is the first German rail route I ever rode in real life, although in the opposite direction. I'm just more used to going this direction. So there's the pair of maps. If you saw the other playthrough, you know one's the grade map, one's the regular map. Then I go to the locomotives. I'll choose list one and choice A, the class 101, which was the class of locomotive that pulled my train when I did my first train ride in Germany. And I pick an intercity, which is more or less the same as a Euro city, technically. So 10 wagons. I don't remember how many were on my train, but I don't really care. <laughs> and they give you the choice of picking your stops. I'm actually going to stop in the places I have stopped in real life at different times. Mulheim, I think so, so I'm going to add that one. Leverkusen, pretty sure about that one as well. So this is actually not going to be the fastest schedule. Langenfeld, I'm going to leave it alone. And get ready to go. There's our schedule. And off we go. So a high ball in German is Abfahren, so there we go. So I release the brakes, I throttle up. Those flashing lights down in the panel are my indice cab signals. I'm going to have to acknowledge them with the return key, hitting it twice and rather firmly, because there is some lag when you run RailSim on DOSBox. It is the best emulator for running real sim on a modern computer though. I have a lot of fun with it actually. Because you don't have to use the horn, it's actually easier to use on the German version than the American version because you just don't use your horn very much in a German situation. So there we have an approach signal that's telling me three or rather 30 kilometers per hour. So I'm gonna have to hold the train back a bit until I have a clearer signal. I hadn't actually driven a train in RailSim in over a year when I did this playthrough, so I made a few minor mistakes, but I'll explain them as they happen. Overall, it was pretty smooth. So we're still at 30 kilometers per hour there. In real life, these locomotives can run up to 200 kilometers per hour, 125 miles an hour, and there are sections of this route, even as it was in the year 2000, where you can do that, but they're further down the route. There's the CIFA alerter over there on the left, you may have seen. You hit the zero key to acknowledge that. That's sort of a dead man system. Every 20 seconds, you have to click the CIFA on a German train to tell the system you're still awake and alive. There it is again. I acknowledge it again. It's irritating at first, but you get used to it. And that was one thing I didn't screw up on this. So we're still creeping along here. One disadvantage of rail sims is that you can't have more than four tracks across and not even on a main line. The main line will only be two tracks. So this is technically a yard that we're in here. When Jens Hubert built RailSim, he did a very, very basic job of it, which also makes it very easy to work with. It's very easy to make routes for it and so on. And the speed limit just went up to 40K, so we can open up a bit. Click the CIFA again. 
to see. I don't know. I guess maybe my first attempt didn't work there. Now we get another signal indicating we can go 60 from this signal onward, and the 9 there indicates we can go 90 at the next signal. I acknowledge the signal there. Acknowledge the CIFA again. Actually, I'm not going to go more than one station on this because I'm otherwise going to run over 10 minutes. So go through Deutz, Full Express. It's not even an option to stop on at this station if you have an uh, intercity train. They do simplify your scheduling for you. So another signal, it's telling me 90K. Still holding me at 60, unlike what it told me earlier. But I am going 60K now. Predicts 90 again. Predicts 90 again. It's really putting it off for me here. And now I can do 90K. So I open up. It's not even all that fast. In miles per hour, it's only about 55. But from Cologne to Dusseldorf, it takes a few stations to actually get up to speed. There's a CIFA again. Or at least as of 2000. This whole line, as I recall, is a bit faster today than it was back then. But it's always been a main line. It's always been proper highballing. It's warning me the next signal will be for 90, so I have to acknowledge that, even though I already know that. Buchforst, this is a local station. I won't be stopping here. I'm being warned again. Next signal will be 90. I already know that. The graphics are really not the greatest in this, nor is the sound. It was originally made in 1995, and it looks like it's from 1985, but I don't really mind so much. It's such a realistic simulator operationally that I never really get tired of this. Now I'm getting an approach on my indice cab signal there because not only do I have a red up ahead, but I also have to stop at the station. And as you'll see, I'll screw this up. This is actually my one major mistake. I'm not going to overshoot, but rather I'm going to pull up too early because they tell me stop at location H3. And then there are no H location signs. I don't remember that bug, actually. It is obviously a bug, but I, I had no recollection of it at all. I think the way you do that is you count the lamps. That's how you handle it. But I failed to do that in this one, so I ended up stopping short of H2, but not H3. Yeah, see, I, I needed to go another lamp, and I decided I was getting concerned that I was going too far. So I stop at H2, represented by that lamp there on the left, instead of at H3, which is the next lamp, which is what I should have done. So anyway, no points because I didn't complete the route. Here's my on-time performance graph. So I went a little bit slow. There's the overall scoring criteria. Speed of the track, speed of the signal, speed of my train, and so on. And then it gives me the RailSim opening screen again. And that's it. Thanks for watching.